Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. I'm just back from holiday and what better topic to cover than updates. Now thankfully there's a handy container called Watchtower. Now before I go down that route I've already covered some update notifications with Dion, the Docker image update notification container. And you can go and look at that video if you want something simple that just does notifications. Watchtower takes that a step further. Yes, it can be configured just to do update notifications as well, but it can also do a whole host of other things. It can dynamically update containers that you select. It can even then prune images you no longer need. It can even restart stopped or exited containers. I'm gonna be showing you all of those options in my Docker Compose file. We're also gonna be using things like secrets to store things like our Gotify notification settings and also some other recommendations that I think you should have on or off by default. Now, as you can possibly tell, I have a little bit of hesitation with Watchtower and that's not with the product itself. It's more with the way its default configuration is. If you spin this up just by using their documentation, the default setup will go ahead and update all of your containers. That might sound good, but also you have to be aware that there can often be breaking changes between versions. In the home lab environment, often those breaking changes aren't well documented. They might not be on different release paths. And as I've experienced in the past, if you're always pulling the latest image, sometimes those images that get pushed out haven't had the right QC, bugs, errors can be in them, security vulnerabilities at the worst, and that could bring everything to a crash. So I'll go through the configuration I recommend now, but do check out the documentation on the official website. And hopefully this will mean that you can keep the containers you want up to date and also get notified on the ones that potentially you want to manually update. So for anyone who's just skipped ahead to this part, I do recommend you go and check out the official documentation for all of the arguments and variables you can put into this compose file. But let's go ahead with this. As I said, these are some of the things I recommend that you look at, but obviously tailor this to whatever you need. So the first thing we're gonna do here is create a secret. Now, the reason we're creating a secret is because in my instance, I put in a API key for Gotify so that I can then send notifications to Gotify whenever anything is updated or notifies me of a change. Now, you can change that to do things like SMTP, um, Slack, Discord, Telegram, and possibly others. But what we first do here is we create a secret. I've called this secret access token and I've also specified the file access token. Now the access token is just a separate file and it's got the access token in that. I'll come on to that later in the video. But basically we're just referencing this file here with that code inside and we're storing that as a variable that we can use later on. When we run this Docker Compose file, Docker goes away, creates an ephemeral, i.e. it's just in memory, copy of this so that the Compose file later on can then use this file for whatever it needs and whatever containers need access to it. There's nothing written to disk. Next, we get onto the traditional container setup. So we're gonna use container and watchtower as the image, and that's gonna pull the latest version. I'm gonna restart this unless stopped. And then the important bit here is we give it access to this secret that we specified just up here. Now that it's got access to that, later on we can use that in an environment variable to call the value of that secret. So for environment variables, time zone, Europe, London, pretty straightforward. Then we get onto some of the interesting parts. So I recommend that you have Watchtower Cleanup enabled and set to true. So what this will do is each time it updates a container, say for example, it updates Jellyfin, it goes away and then deletes the old image once it's updated. Again, possibly a bit of a double-edged sword depending on what container you're updating. If you downloaded a buggy version, you might want to quickly go back to the old version. For example, if this screws up your DNS and you're updating PyHole, you might want to go back to the old PyHole and it would be a bit more difficult if you couldn't access the latest container because your PyHole and that's your DNS resolver wasn't working. So have a think about whether this is right for you. I'm going to put it on. Next is what really makes Watchtower powerful. And that is the fact that you can specify which containers you want it to apply to. 
Now, importantly, there are labels, and that's probably the recommended setup. So basically, in a Docker Compose file, you would set a label to either be true or false. And Watchtower can then read that label, and depending on what you've set and also the environment variable you choose, you can choose whether that container is included or excluded. All of that can be overridden by what I've put here. So what you need to do is choose the method that works best for you. All I've done in here is basically a bit of an extreme example. I've said disable updating traffic, crowdsec, bouncer traffic, decons, frigate, home assistant and the home assistant DB. Now I've done that because in a moment I'll show you my portainer setup and it should only update containers where that name doesn't equal those container names. Now it's probably a good idea to put some things in here that you definitely don't want to break. Your proxy might be a good one, your pi-hole DNS resolver, something like that might also be a good one. You might just wish to have notifications and then manually update when you're ready and you're not somewhere else in the world, away from home where you've got no chance of doing some remote admin. Importantly as well, you don't just have to run this on your local Docker host, you can specify a host name and port here and you could use Watchtower to manage a different Docker host elsewhere. There's also the ability to restart a container after it's updated. Some containers might need that, others may not. It's entirely up to you, so just uncomment that. Whether or not you want to update and then start stopped or exited containers. So if you have a bunch of containers on your Docker host that are turned off manually or have crashed or have been ephemeral containers, once those are updated, you can actually tell it to start. I'm not going to do that because I generally don't want things that have been stopped by me to restart. But you can obviously tweak that and that's a cool feature to have. Actually, I've just got those mixed up. The first one is whether to update those that you stopped. And then the second one here is whether to actually restart them after you've updated them. So you actually get granular control over both of those items. The next one is, like I said at the beginning of the video, that Dion that other container that I've covered in a previous video, we can actually just tell Watchtower to go ahead and notify us. So it'll basically ignore all of the updating and the other parameters we've set, and it will simply send us a notification to whatever we set later in the notification settings area. The next variable is whether to perform rolling updates. Now I've set this to true, and I generally approve of that way of doing it, just because you might want containers to restart in a particular order, not that you can actually set the logic here as far as I'm aware, but updating all of your containers in one go might cause some issues. Doing a rolling update means it updates one and then it moves sequentially onto the next one. The next section is where we have those notifications themselves. So I've set the notifications to use Gotify. Like I said, you can change this to others that are supported and check the website for all of the details. I've specified the URL for my Gotify instance and then I've used the token. Now, as I said, the token is stored in memory and it's actually stored here in this run secrets and then the name of that file access token. That's all you need to put in there. Now for the volumes, it's using the Docker sock, which isn't necessarily the most secure method and this will make it run as root, but it's mounting the sock as a volume so that it can be used. Now, I don't wanna go into too much detail for the second volume, but it's good to note that you can actually use private repos. So if you've got a private repo that's cloud hosted, you can use that. Or if you've got something locally, you can also use that. And what this will do is the config.json basically stores the credentials for you to access it. And it can even do things like two-factor authentication if you have that enabled. So I won't cover that in this video because I'm not using it for my Docker infrastructure, but do note that that is possible and you can find the detailed instructions on the website. The last command here is basically to set this to run every 30 seconds. And this parameter takes seconds as its input. So now you've got both of these files and you understand what they are, we're ready to get this up and running. So I've now navigated onto my Docker host machine where I've copied those two files over and we're ready to get this up and running. So I'm gonna change directory to my Docker compose folder. See that those are both there and I'm gonna do a sudo docker compose up dash D. Once I put my password in, that should then go and grab that image and we should be up and running. So that's now pulling the image everything looks fine and that's being created. I'm gonna jump into Portainer just to make sure that that's working. 
So over here on my portainer, you can see all of the containers I've got up and running and you can see the ones, so things like Netbird for example, which I've covered in a previous video, that wasn't in my exclusion list. So if we go down to Watchtower, you can see that that's starting if I hit the logs. You can see that it's using Gotify notification, it's only checking containers that are not named traffic, it's scheduling the first run and it's found a new Netbird management and a new Netbird signal image. That's great. It's found a new co-turn. It's found a new Netbird dashboard. So it's basically going through and doing everything we've asked for. You can see that it hasn't pulled any of these so far. And if we go back to the containers list, it should be now pulling some of those images. So some of these are still unused. That's because they're being pulled and it hasn't restarted the container with that yet. It's now found things like paperless, etc. And I'm going to let this run for a few minutes and then I'll come back to it once it's completed. So now you can see it found all of those images and then it's stopping and creating it. Stopping and creating it. Stopping and creating it. And that will go through now for all of those because that's how we've got it configured. Now hopefully this will all go to plan and we should be able to see on the containers here. Some of those, so paperless is restarting, that's because it got restarted with that new image. And then hopefully we won't have any problems accessing some of these servers. Now, as I said, this is where it can get a bit tricky because you're basically offsetting the manual process of reading through and making sure there's no breaking changes. You're automating that process and it doesn't have any logic built into it to do those checks. So you really need to be careful with what you're doing when you automate all of this. So as you can now see, it finished. It removed all of those images because they're no longer created because we set that in the config file. It says its session is done. It scanned 17, it updated 11, and it didn't do any notifications. Well, I think the notify no means that it didn't just do a notification, it didn't update. If I log into my Gotify here, you can see that one minute ago, it basically spits out all of the details that were in the log file. It found all those new images and it removed them all, found Watchtower update, all that good stuff. So now we have Watchtower sending us notifications to our self-hosted notification system, Gotify, or whatever platform you want. So you should always be up to date on what's being updated on your home lab. Now I'm just going to check that Netbird still works because I did access that one, logged me in through Authentic, and yeah, this is the same one that I set up in a previous video. I closed down all the hosts and clients etc so don't worry about that but you can see it updated the container and I've still got access to it so after it's automatically updated I strongly recommend you go and check that those services are working because you often only find out that they're not when you most need them so hopefully that gives you everything you need to know or certainly the bare essentials of Watchtower as I said I strongly recommend that you go and read all of the documentation and you also have some backup strategies should you pull down a bad image, i.e. you might want to disable the deleting of images and perhaps you want to increase the frequency of your snapshots for your virtual machines. Anyway, let me know if this is something that you're going to use or whether you're just going to stick it more into the notification space or just do it all manually. Who knows? Drop a comment below and if you've liked this video, hit the thumbs up, hit that subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.